of the Realist Podcast with myself and the dog. We chose a different location for today. The dog's typing something. You hear any like birds and shit? We are outside. We are out here. We are indeed out here. We are in the park. A very chill environment. See it up since the last time we did because last time we did it was freezing, so we couldn't really go out. But uh, we decided, and the dogs decided it's going to be hot. Let's go outside. I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, the dogs currently typing. Inside. Hold on. Say that again. You always inside. I am always inside. No, I'm not. I do go out occasionally, like for food and that. Like, I don't mean going back, like going for food, like to eat. I mean, I'm buying, buying stuff. But that's because it's cold. It's been cold. Now it's heating up, and I think I'm willing to go outside now. But yeah. We're not going to be talking about mm. going out. Our topic today is transportation and the fuckery of it. So obviously, I'm in a wheelchair and the doll has cerebral palsy and it's difficult for both of us getting on and off public transportation. And uh, one of the biggest ones is, one of the easiest ones for like normal able-bodied people is buses. Um, I have both a manual and an electric wheelchair and even with both I can barely get on a bus mainly because most people they can be dicks and not really allow the, the wheelchair to go on I've had quite a few um, experiences with people saying public transportation it is a bitch excuse my language there are young children around mm-hmm. Um, but it's one of those things where, as we say, buses, trains, sometimes cabs, um, trams as well. Obviously, with not many people like if you go, I'm not one to use a tram that much. Mainly like trains, buses, and cabs. The biggest thing that I have the problem with is the buses. You can't really get on and off the buses. And uh, it would be, if I could, like, if people were more willing to let wheelchairs get on buses, and the door myself could do so much, so much more with ourselves, like going places, like going to London and stuff like that, and the same with trains. Um, and the door obviously find it, finds it difficult to get on a, get on buses because and he doesn't want to fall over. Uh, helicopter flying over us. Looking for the door, I guess. Um, but it's also because like, where, he's, where he finds it hard to stand, not many people are nowadays are willing to uh, give up give up their seat. The door's typing. And rush hour. Yeah, rush hour is like the biggest thing. Like, not even, even, even that though, even when you're going to get on a bus during the day, when kids are at school and everything, mm. it's still like, there's the difficulty of getting on a bus, because you've got to get on, do the Oyster card thing, unless you've got a freedom bus, and then get, then find a seat. Me, obviously, I can't, I, my, wheel, my electric wheelchair is way too big to get on enough fucking, uh, buses so I can't use that and then my manual getting on it's a mission because I've got no arm strength to get on so I always have to have someone with me and then there's the possibility of a pram being in the wheelchair space and then you have an, end up having an argument with a mother like oh my my child takes priority no it fucking doesn't woman move <laughs> man of arguments I've had with women like just because they want their child to be in pram. No! Move! <clears throat> it, 
it, is, it just baffles me how many women do it. It's hard. It's very hard. Um, especially like moving on to the next subject, trains. They're the fuckery of things. Because I'm the doll myself use the ramp to get on and off. Do you not use the ramp? I know I use the ramp. To get on and off, which... I just get on. You just get on. So you're lucky. Me, obviously, I have to use the ramp. But, if you want to use the ramp, you have to book the ramp. Now, say we, was, say we sprung it today and was like, oh, let's go to London, yeah? I can't. Because I have to book the, va- the ramp in advance. And I have to make sure that someone's there to put, put the ramp there. It's so stupid. Because, just say, like, tomorrow we would say, oh, let's go to London, yeah? We couldn't. We'd have to go, go home, book the ramp for tomorrow at a set time. Be there at that set time to make sure the ramps, the ramp, the ramp person is there to put a ramp on, and then make sure they have to radio through for the ramp to be there maybe London. It's a little kerfuffle, yeah. just like for us just wanting to go somewhere. Because mm-hmm. it's difficult. We want to do so many things on our own, but we always have the the setback of all oh, right, this hap- this is happening or. You have to do this to get to that. In a matter of terms, obviously, I used to do it with my... Uh, I had a PA. And when me and my PA used to go to London, we turn up and we get off, we'd have to argue with the man, obviously, like, no, you have to book it in advance, blah, blah, blah. And there was one occasion where I went went to London at night. And I went out about 6.30, was coming home about 10. And then the Beckenham, with Beckenham, they close about 10.30, so we weren't going to get back in time, so they, we had to reroute, get a, go to a different station, go for that station, and then get a bus on. Just because the Beckenham Junction didn't have anyone to man the ramp. Someone has to be there to help us. Mm, yeah. And that's the annoying thing, we have to have someone who is at least able-bodied to come with us in these type of situations where we want to be independent and there are all these things like oh you should be more independent you should do this you should do that how are we meant to be independent when there's all these roadblocks in our way it's so difficult like I saw I saw yesterday yeah this was one that pissed me off there was a dude when I met I went and met a client yesterday um for my counselling but as I was waiting, there was someone getting on the bus, and he was in a wheelchair, yeah? Now, if there was too many people on the bus, yeah? And he was in a wheelchair. The bus driver said that he couldn't get on because there was too many people on the bus. Surely he should have said to the people, some people, get off the bus, let the wheelchair on. Because the wheelchair should take priority, in my opinion. Other people's opinion may not, be, may not see it like that. I see it as if you're in a wheelchair, if you've got a type of disability, you should take some pri- some priority. Not a full amount of priority, but it's difficult enough for us nowadays to get around. And what would have happened if he didn't, if there wasn't a way for him to get another bus? And he had to wait like another hour and a half. I know buses come within like 20 30 minutes, but he would have been another setback for him. It's just things like that that piss me off. People who are able-bodied take advantage of it in so many ways. Hopping on the bus, hopping on the train. And then we're just like, we have to like struggle our ways to do things. And then you get the like, people going, oh, you should do more things. If we could, we would. But we always have to, need, we always need the assistance of someone else. And that's not what we want. We want to be able to go we want to go here, let's go here. It's, and like, cabs obviously, they're a bit topsy-turvy. Because you can either have normal cabs, and the doll uses cab, maybe Uber, stuff like that, he can use it. Me, with having a wheelchair obviously, I have to have a cab big enough for the wheelchair. Obviously the manual. But when it comes to the electric, 
I have to have like a black cab sort of thing to get the chair in. That's where the taxi cab comes into play. That's one of the best things. Like, that's the, that's a pro for us. I think we're going to use that on the third. I'm only going to say I'm only going to say my manual that day. Maybe I'm not taking that trick. <clears throat> but like taxi, like the taxi cab, is a way for us to get around, get from A to B, and it doesn't charge that much. But if, we, if I was using my manual, and I had, and I, I ordered the cab that didn't have a big enough boot, I'd then have to wait another 20, 10, 15 minutes to 20 minutes for another cab for a bigger boot, but then they charge you extra because of the wheelchair. At 10.50, just have a wheelchair in the back. Hmm. See, I don't know, there's not much really, what's your views on the public transport? You have a diagnostic view from the mind of Nadal. It's not suitable for disabled people with mobility in my opinion. Like instant when you go to the airport, you can ask for assist. With a wheelchair with someone to help. See... I've never really... I've never flown anywhere. Next year will be like one of the first times I fly, so that's when I'll have experience with airport and everything. But, yeah, you've obviously, you fly a lot, and you, you've used boats and stuff like that, yeah, to get to Belgium and shit like that. So, Nadal does a lot more travelling than me, and that's another thing, that's another lot of transportation. Um, but he's got like a whole new view on that, because he does it a lot, whereas I'm still new to that kind of transportation, getting around and stuff like that. I'm very new to it. I've flown an aeroplane twice. Once to France and back. And I went to France and Lourdes. But it was uh, not the most mm. you know, fun experience. I went for a spiritual trip. Learn all about Jesus. It didn't exactly change my soul. So I now curse more than ever. But yeah. Um, I don't even know what else to say because I think I've said that before. It was kind of a short one. We are limited. We are very limited from what we can do. And this sucks. So if there's anyone listening to this that if you see someone struggling, or if you see someone that is going to get on a bus or a train and you want to help them, don't be afraid to say, to open one's mouth and go, do you, do you need help? Because occasionally they're going to go, nah, I'm alright and everything, but then there might be the other person and go, yeah, I'll have, I'll have a hand, thank you. Look, just because we've got like some form of change with us, it will, won't exactly kill you to open your mouth and go, don't be scared. Yeah, I know that's one of the biggest things you see, like, me in a wheelchair, you see the doll limping where he's got his cerebral palsy and you're like, oh okay, I better not ask him. Okay, so if, like one of the biggest things in my they think they're gonna offend us. I know there are some people that do get offended by people asking, but you ask most people nowadays, they're open to that, they're open to people asking if they want help. The majority of the people that I know of, they're gonna say no because they want to be independent. But there will be that one or two people that will go, yeah, I love you, how? I love you, how? Help. Fucking can't speak. And uh, it will do great for not only their confidence, but your self confidence. Because then you know that you've helped someone get from doing something that they can't achieve. But yeah. I think that's all we've got time to talk about in this one. This is episode three. And I say three because we're surrounded by trees. <laughs> Bad fun, I know. Uh, but yeah, we'll be back. Episodes go up on Wednesdays and Sundays. Nadal, I have to bollock you now. Yesterday was Thursday and you put up the podcast. Uh. <laughs> you text me and I'm like, today's Thursday. I'm, I'm bollocking when I see him. So, yes, Wednesdays and Sundays is when podcasts do go up. Um. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, we'll uh, catch, catch you in the, in the minute.